Welcome to Spiritual Birth Tarot. I'm Dr. Madeline coming from Albu um, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Today I'm asking for divine wisdom for the Dental Collective watching for January 12 through 18. If this message inspires you, please subscribe and like and share this video. And if you would like a personal reading, um, please join my Facebook group, uh, Spiritual Birth Tarot, and I will be happy to uh, do a reading for you. So today we're looking at the, the Dental Collective, so those dentists listening to this message specifically, or someone in the dental field. Um, it can also be uh, somebody watching for someone they know in the dental field. Uh, since this is a general reading, it may not uh, resonate with you, and if not, that's fine. Um, hopefully the next one will. So I'd like to start with the uh, Spirit Animal cards. This is one of my favorite Oracle decks. It uh, shows different animals, and if you see this animal in the wild, or you see it on TV or somewhere around you, you can remember the message that it's trying to give to you um, at this time. And uh, so let's take a look at a couple of animal messages. The first is the giraffe spirit. Uh, see the big picture. So as you're uh, going through this next week at uh, work, in the dental office, um, dealing, dealing with the patients, and everything in your practice, be sure to see the big picture. And the second one is the otter. You are never alone. So here the otter is with his child, and it's a uh, beautiful setting that the otter is never alone. So I'd also like to get a couple cards from the Chakra Oracle deck. So the chakra are the different parts of your body that have different energies. And those energies can flow together. And the more that they are open and flowing, the better health you have in body, mind, and spirit. And so sometimes an energy healer can help you to open those chakras. And so many times we might say, well, that's not scientific at all. However, we've found that um, things like reflexology and uh, acupuncture can be quite helpful. So we're also finding that the energy healing uh, techniques can be helpful too. So let's take a look and see what our uh, divine uh, wisdom is saying today. The inner child and the family. So I think it's very fascinating that we have two family cards. So we have the otter family and we have the monkey family. So I think the monkeys are showing us this is kind of the playful side to the family, the fun side. Let's get out there and have some fun and throw some poop at some people. Okay, just kidding. And uh, this is the otter spirit. Um, you are not alone. And the otters go together. They're very quiet and peaceful, contented, spending time with their their baby swimming around, laying on their backs, eating their food, but also um, they can be a fairly playful group as well. So I'm thinking this is telling us, bring that playfulness of spirit into your home. And as you do that, that will help your inner child and also your child's inner child. It'll help you heal some of your past and bring back some of your past that was great and good. And it will also um, help your child to form a good inner child that they will carry through their lives. And we can see here, the big picture of the giraffe is looking out over everything. They're tall. Because they're so tall, they can eat some of the best leaves on the bush. They can look out and see what's coming. There's danger. There's prosperity where the next bush is abundance they can see the abundance is all around them so we are surrounded by abundance 
And not everyone has the blessing of having a family, as in children. But maybe you have uh, parents that um, you need to be remembering. Maybe right now we can't um, contact them directly, but we might be doing FaceTime and um, other forms of communication with them, helping them know that they're not alone and have a little bit of fun in their lives. And maybe your family, maybe you're completely single and alone. If so, you know, create your soul family, those people who you can really bond with and connect with, and that will help your inner child uh, to come out in more fun and play, and you'll be able to see the big picture. So I think the big picture here is we might think of family on a small scale as our two kids, but many times a family is our church family, our community family, our uh, extended family, and see the big picture of what this uh, family entails for us. So let's begin the uh, tarot card reading. So I'd like to start with this uh, Luan deck. It has a, a Celtic background and I, I picked it uh, to start with as my first deck because I lived in Ireland for a year. And the mystery and the uh, beauty that I received uh, by living in Ireland uh, for that time was just um, an amazing experience. And so I would uh, really would like to, um, well, encourage you if you're able to go visit, do go visit, it's a beautiful place. So today we would like to um, focus our attention on what message would we like to receive um, to the uh, dental community. So the collective is watching, um, especially in the dental community, or if you know someone in the dental community, or you know what, you could even be thinking about your dentist and what you could do for, do for them. And so I'm sure this will resonate with others as well. But I would like to specifically think of that. I am, a, after all, a dentist. So that would be um, special to my heart. And I taught dental students for many years. So they are precious in my heart as well. So I would like to start here. Let's... Uh, Let's say, what is the main message that we're looking for? All right. So the main message is Six of Pentacles. The Two of Wands is um, either the help or the hindrance to that. Um, underneath, we have the uh, Five of Wands. In the recent past, the Fool in the uh as our overall focus and um the overall reading and also the the timing is the universe uh which in this deck is the world uh the future is the wheel of fortune the tower make sure you can just see it tower is is you eight of swords is your environment two of pentacles is your hopes and fears and the advice um you should look toward and knight of wands is the uh, final the potential outcome of this reading. And so the uh, overall energy of the reading underneath the deck is the sun, um, which is very interesting. It is, it's a Leo card. So it's a, um, a card that has to do with the uh, fire signs, Leo, Sagittarius, and um, Aries. You can see that um, in this in this particular card, um, a very young and healthy man is riding on a very young and healthy horse, 
with the sun behind them. It's a very happy, happiness, lightness, looking for the beauty and the happiness in life. So no matter what we're finding here, um, this week, we can be going toward thinking about ways that we can bring happiness into our life. And I'm thinking the first part of the reading, which is about the family, that the family and the extended family and the soul family and the uh, church family and all the different families in our lives can uh, be part of that happiness that we are able to have this week. So when we're looking at uh, the Six of Pentacles, uh, it has to do with giving and taking and, and, uh, and uh, abundance, both in um, material things, uh, whether it's money or friends, um, children, all of the abundance that we have in life, both in giving to those people and in taking as needed. So it's a give and take. Six is a balance. So we're bringing into balance the abundance and the charity in our lives. And the thing that will help that is the gifts that have been given to us from the world. So as the world gives us balance and uh, beauty and uh, strength and a lot of uh, fiery energy. And as the world is giving that to us, we're able to give it to others in our abundance. So this week we want to really focus on giving to um, other people. And that again is a, a family picture here. So it's that concept of family. So this person is alone. They're seeking balance and they're gaining uh, wisdom from the world that's in their hand. And they're also, you can see they're gaining outer wisdom because this card usually has the world. In this particular deck, it looks more like a crystal ball, which would be a mysterious uh, wisdom. So I think we're bringing together in balance both the outer world and the inner world. And again, we have an overall sense of happiness with the sun and the light. So we want to bring happiness into our lives by giving to others. I think that's how we will get happiness this week. Now, um, underneath, we're having some strife and difficulties. This could be with some of our staff, some of our, our uh, yeah, or if we are in the category of the teammates, we could be uh, the team that's uh, fighting amongst themselves or fighting with each other. And uh, so underneath, we have to be careful and watching for um, some of these stripes. And we may not totally recognize them because it's the underneath card. So if we aren't recognizing this, I think if we um, turn to an attitude of, of giving, of giving to others, it will help us to overcome the strife. So watch for a little bit of strife, you know, among your colleagues, among your family, among your friends. And if you are getting that strife, really look toward uh, giving and receiving as a way to um, help alleviate some of that conflict. Now, um, in the past, pretty much all of us have been going through this element of the COVID. And so I think the... The fool of the past is very appropriate because all of us are leaping into the unknown. You know, we really have to have, have to have left a lot of our baggage behind. You know, we certainly don't get our nails done and our hair done and go out and to uh, restaurants and spend a lot of money with uh, all of those things that we used to spend money on and have a lot of things in our life. And so our, our burdens have become very light. So the fool is somebody who is jumping into the unknown, going over the abyss. Um, I think it's interesting there's a rainbow in this card and so and also water. So there's a combination of fire, which this is the Sagittarius card, which is in the December time period. So as this uh, fire is happening and this rainbow is happening, 
the rainbow is that beautiful mixture of water and fire and the, uh, the promise that comes. So we have a promise that if we leap, take the leap of faith into the unknown, that um, good things will come to us. So leave behind our baggage and step into the unknown. So that's what a lot of us have been doing in different ways, in our families, in our businesses, in our relationships with our parent patients, we have been stepping forward. And I think a lot of that jumping forward has been um, brought up, is bringing us into the, the future. And the future is uh, the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune is one of my favorite cards, especially in this deck. You know, this beautiful uh, woman dressed in red, you know, in the, in the dark of the night is bringing into the world the wheel of change. So here we have in the future, there's going to be an inevitable change. So the wheel points to an inevitable change. The 10 is both the end and the beginning. So the end of a car, you know, the end of a cycle and the beginning of a new cycle. So in some ways, I would say that like this last week was, or this last month or this last beginning of this last year was the end of a cycle. But there may be some things in your personal life that are, you know, or maybe in your business that the cycle is coming to the end. You know, it might be as, as simple as um, August is the end of the quarter. That's an inevitable end. Um, December is the end of the year. And so let's take a look a little bit more at this card and what it might be uh, pointing us toward. And so um, over top of all this is the universe. Now, I love the universe card even more than the earth the the world card the world card is pointing to um the conclusion you know we say it's also the end but it's the conclusion the finality of something and uh but the universe has even more to do with bringing together it's the end of just seeing things from a worldly perspective and starting to see things in the collective so you know, in the past, we have looked at me, myself, and I. In the future, we look at we and us. And really, all of these things that have happened, we've had to jump into a new reality. A new reality that's much broader and bigger than ourselves. Worrying about the whole community and not just our own game. And as we give to others... This will be grown in us, this ability to reach out and to give to the whole world and to the whole universe and not just to be stuck in ourselves. You know, so often we are fighting and grumbling among ourselves, focusing in. You can see how they're all focused in on their fight. And here, you know, we're, we're looking into the mysteries of the universe into this little hole but at the same time we're looking at the expanse of the universe so we bring the individual into the collective and it's a three two plus one is three and so the three of the universe is uh, the joining of us our friends and the divine all together uh, creating that uh the universal truth so I, I see that is what's happening. Um, the reason for us to be focusing on giving of our abundance, what we have. Remember, as we give, we will receive. And that's what this card is all about. You know, some people say, okay, give your tithe and you will get more blessings from God. It's the same concept. As we give out to the universe, we will receive from the universe. The universe is is full it is bountiful it's abundant when will the uh, universe ever be lacking never and so in our lives think that there is no lack 
we might not see the end of the tunnel right now. We may not see around the corner, but if we can remind ourselves that there is no lack, then we'll be seeing the big picture. And the big picture is being able to look all around us and to see in the distance more and more and more abundance. And the world is full of abundance. And as we can have as one of our mantras, abundance is here. Abundance is everywhere. So I think maybe that's what this is. We're changing our mindset. We're changing the mindset from take, 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 look at me to give, give to others and we will find the abundance of the universe at our disposal. So that is the change that's happening in our lives. Sometimes it's hard to see what the change will be. That's why it's the nighttime and it's dark. We don't know where we're going to go, but we know that a change will happen within us. And we can also say in our world, we want to change to have more human rights, we want to have um, more growth. We want to have more direction in our lives. So we want, we want so much change toward the better in this world. So right now, this is how people are seeing us, which is, I think, just absolutely fascinating. Because the tower is one of the strongest, most immediate cards. So here we have a structure that's being hit by all the forces of the elements and in the process it falls. So this tower is falling and as it falls, I love this particular card because we can see that the elements are against it. The elements are against, guess what? COVID came and it hit us. It was our tower. Well, one of the big towers in our lives. When we uh, look at the, the tower, this is how people see us. So I think it's very fascinating that this is the, the card that comes out right now as the way people view us. You know, here we have a large structure, but it has been beaten down and destroyed by the elements. And as these elements hit it, it falls. So there are many things that could have happened in our lives that are related to the tower. And uh, it could be that, uh, you know, one of our family members has been lost. Could be that we uh, lost portions of our businesses um, because of the uh, infection. Maybe some of the riots have had some of our businesses broken down. Literally, we've had a physical tower. So as this breaks down, but the beauty of the tower is that that's, there's still a strong foundation there and a chance to rebuild. So although it is something that's coming, that's going to break, if we can avoid it, that would be great. This time, I don't think we were able to. So we're right in the midst of being broken down in many different ways. But during that breakdown, we have been able, we will be able to be rebuilt. So what's offered to us right now is a lot more uh, pain, suffering, really being bound, bound and gagged and blind. We're blind to maybe where we should go, how we should move, what we should do. We're not being given a lot of options. So maybe we can ask, um, how, what could we do? How could we um, address this blindness and this uh, tied down feeling that we have all around us uh, because we don't we don't want to stay tied down so hopefully that has something to do with the change that's going to occur in the near future so as things begin to change hopefully we will be able to see clearer have more clarity so the thing we want to focus on is uh, finding Balance. Now, the interesting thing about this card is especially about balancing finances and home. And so here we have the cards about the home and the family. 
you know, the otters, the monkeys, the family, the home, the inner child. Uh, looking at the big picture, the big picture is, you know, we have we have home on the one side, we have family on the other. We're trying to balance those two. Usually it takes a little time to create the plan in our lives. And as we create that plan, we are able to then move forward and to balance these things. And uh, as we are pushing toward that balance, we will move into the Knight of Wands, the, the fast-moving, spirited, um, passionate energy that can uh, drive us uh, forward. So hopefully the, the outcome can be um, this, this passionate energy, this new it's a fairly new energy because it's a knight. Uh, it's a little faster. It's not a king or a queen. Um, and so in that younger male uh, energy, not necessarily a male person, but a male energy pushing forward in us, bringing passion back into our lives, and hopefully it will bring us to a greater sense of, of um, happiness so I kind of see these two cards as being very similar so a Sun card being part of the major arcana it's a little stronger and more predominant card and uh, this being one of the uh, core cards so there may be someone that will come into your life uh, Leo Aries Sagittarius with a lot of passion and energy that will help you move forward into more peace and happiness, you know, and um, help us to uh, to accept the changes and to move with the changes that are inevitably happening and to um, work through some of the uh, strife that is coming into our life. So let's take a look at a couple of cards that I had some questions. Um, the first the first one that I had some questions on was I'd like to know a little bit more about this over here. A little bit more about the uh, the wheel. So what kind of changes are kind of inevitably happening, but it's happening in the divine timing. So we don't know when that recent or the near future is referring to because it's a very open-ended card also the timing card being the universe it's a very to me would be a very open-ended timing so this might be a big change and a change that happens over a long period of time so let's take a look at the wheel and uh, see what we are going to be finding there We're looking for some cards that are going to jump out at us and want to be noticed. Yeah, whatever. Okay, that feels good. All right, so the bottom of the deck is the Ace of Wands. So for the wheel, we're looking at Ace of Wands, Page of Wands, the Devil, and Ace of Pentacles. So, as we are moving into a new energy, a new passion, a creative direction, 
um, there are some things that are binding us or holding us back and uh, those things will hopefully be changed so that we can face and be brought into new um, prosperity um, in our lives. So the one thing I think we should notice is there's two aces here. So there's two beginning cards. So I think that definitely this wheel is bringing about new beginnings, new beginnings in our passions, our creativity, our interests, and also in our, our wealth and our um, bountifulness, which actually is interesting because that's what we were kind of talking about is that bringing on, you know, the sense of lack. And so, you know, instead of seeing lack, the wheel helps us to see the possibilities for the bountiful, which is available to us in the universe. So, you know, we can sit around and say, oh, man, I never get enough new patients or I never do well enough in my practice. And, you know, people never accept my treatment plans or, you know, maybe it's like, oh, my boss, uh, you know, my the dentist is always mean to me and they don't like me or they never think I work hard enough. So if we think all of those negative thoughts, we are not going to be able to step into the Ace of Pentacles and the Ace of Wands, the Page of Wands, which are these new beginnings and these new focuses into the state of abundance. So I think that Devil card is all of these thoughts that hold us back and keep us from entering what's really available to us. And um, another thing I wanted to ask some questions about is the uh, eight, of, eight of Swords. So all around us, there's pain, suffering. We can't see what's going on. We can't feel what's going on. And let's kind of define what, what could we do as a individual and a collective to help the world around us. So the world around us is the Eight of Swords. What could we do to help the world around us? So we're looking for divine wisdom in ways that we can make a difference moving forward. Oh, that's my dog. That's a Pooh Bear. And she is most, one of the most wonderful labr labradoodles in the world. My cousin had to have her have a new home for a little while. And so I'm really grateful to um, have somebody in my life who loves me unconditionally. So I highly recommend a, a pet. So we're just looking for what can we do as a collective and an individual to help the world in this state right now. So what can we do to help the world? What can we do to help the world? What can we do to help the world? So. Oh, we got a lot of answers. Okay. All right. So the King of Pentacles is on the back. Let's start with the first one. So it's one, two, and it's, I don't know. Should have paid more attention to what order they came out. I will next time. But I think it's fascinating that we have Okay, so the Ace of Swords has to do with new beginnings, but kind of like a truthfulness, directness, cutting through the BS in life. And uh, I think as we do, in order to do that, we're going to need to uh, create a lot of balance. So um, the Two of Wands could have, we had one of those before, the Two of Wands for our... Um, one of our energies 
Um, yeah, that was our uh, helpful energy. So we're again getting a two of wands. So that is putting a little emphasis on the balance and the gifts, both of the internal and the external. So some of the things that we can do for the world is to cut through the craziness, offer balance in, in the way we approach things, courage, and knowing that we are sitting in plenty. So positive thoughts, positive energies. So as we give to the world uh, direct positive energies of courage and strength, we will bring a lot of love and happiness and uh, security and uh, strength. And uh, this is, you know, like holding on to your wealth, but it, it can be positive in the sense that you're in a secure and stable environment. It can be negative in the sense that you're holding onto yourself too much. So it might be that we shouldn't hold on to ourselves too much or we won't be able to give to the world this happiness, peace, and love that we are, are wanting to give. And once again, we have um, the uh, Six of Cups, uh, which is um, showing, giving, you know, giving... Um, it's kind of a, a sense of um, having what we need. You can see they, they look very happy and contented. And it's fascinating because the Six of Cups and the Six of Pentacles. And so giving to the world the bounty that we have, giving what we have, even if we don't have very much right now, giving what we have and the little that we have, and it will help us have this sense of having enough all around us. You can see all the cups are full. The people are happy. Here, the people are happy because we're getting, and here we have the, the happiness and joy in the family. Um, it can also mean um, like a happy marriage or happy love life. And so bringing all of this happiness and joy and bounty into the world, um, the security and the feeling of um, having enough and having the plenty that we need. And to do that, we're having to cut through the BS of life in order to demonstrate balance in the world and use courage to do that. So in a courageous effort, so I'm trying to think, what are some of the courageous things that we could do to help bring balance to the world? So there's so much imbalance right now. So think of some of the imbalances that you've seen in the world and in your life. I'm thinking of, well, I don't think I have to be specific. I mean, let's say in the family. You know, are we balanced between the male and the female and the children? Do we respect our children and our children respect us? Do we respect our husbands and we respect our wives? Or maybe we have a family that has more to do with our, our animals or our, um, you know, parents. Uh, like I said, our, our soul family. So are we bringing into balance um, the different elements of the family um, and bringing those into courage. Or maybe uh, we can look at, you know, the issues of the uh, races and the imbalances there. So what could we do with courage and with, um, you know, just cutting through everything and bringing in a new beginning of hope? So maybe um, in our offices, in our places of work, you know, we, we might feel frustrated about, you know, things like riots because they've destroyed some of our property. But instead, can we be courageous enough to say, you know what, I'm going to join this fight, this fight for um, independence, this fight for equality, this fight for human basic rights. 
that on me to be in in our entire world and we're looking at the whole world and we're saying how can we help to balance that well you say i'm just one little person but this one little person is fighting against all these other six people and but because they've taken a higher ground they have the advantage and so we need to take the higher ground in life speak the truth hold the truth show the truth and by doing that truth we can help bring balance to the world so right now our world is filled with sorrow pain we don't know where to turn and uh, we feel all tied up and helpless so use this sword to break yourself free from what's going on here fight the good the good fight and the rewards are a more balanced and prosperous world so i think uh that's where i would like to end things today our subconscious tarot message is the king of pentacles so once again all this around us is the the bounty the abundance the plenty see it accept it and bring it into your life and the uh the un, un sub, subconscious unconscious <laughs> while you're sleeping this the subconscious uh, uh animal card is the seahorse watch and wait so there are times when we need to take action there are times when we need to watch and wait so i can imagine a seahorse certainly doesn't do anything fast and yet it gets a lot done so it it goes around it finds its mate it has its little babies inside of its um stomach and the the male seahorse has the babies coming in and out and takes care of them and brings new life it's watching those babies it's waiting for them to return and as we watch and we wait in this world it's a it's an eight again so eight has a lot of importance a lot of moving forward a lot of abundance uh, that we are watching and waiting for in our lives and the uh subconscious is communication so um, there's all kinds of communication that we need to have and especially in our families and in our offices and here we have some strife and so let's try to bring some good communication to help us deal with the strife that we may be having as well as giving of ourselves in different ways and the other um card that we want to look at is the uh, subconscious message of the tarot and this is the six of wands which is victory and so victory all right woohoo so what do you know that goes really well with the uh sun so here we are riding into victory in our lives. And so this week, imagine yourself riding into victory, into the happiness of the sun. Um, may God bless you and keep you this week. And um, again, uh, please uh, check out the uh, spiritual birth. Uh, Facebook page and uh, spiritual um, birth eight um, YouTube and subscribe and like and please share this with anyone who you feel it may resonate or bless with not just the uh, dental uh, community.